Michael, I'm going to come back to you. I believe this is probably the last question. We just have a minute or two left here, but I wanted to kind of zoom out um, from this focus on the United States. And you know, you made the very the point very early on that this all you know comes back to the fact that we, as a as a world, continue to to put greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and that that is you know um, worsening all of these problems. Sort of. The two questions I have on that is, you know, there have been a lot of promises made both by our nation and others to do more to cut greenhouse gases in recent years. Um, and yet, you know, the globe's emissions continue to rise or at least or at least to, you know, plateau. Uh, what must change for that to change in the drastic way that scientists say it needs to change? And then, you um, uh, you know, and what gives you hope that it will? And I would just add to that, what role do wealthy countries such as the United States owe to other nations that are feeling, uh, you know, the same kind of impacts, if not worse, um, than we're seeing here in America, um, but did little to nothing to cause this problem? I mean, the, the basic bottom line is, if we don't rein in greenhouse gas emissions, we're never going to adapt or build resilience fast enough and uh, effectively enough to catch up with the climate change. It's just going to run ahead of us. And I can't imagine what that world looks like in a few decades if we just sit here and let it happen. So, you know, what's actually going on is that most countries have made some serious commitments to reduce their greenhouse emissions and their contribution to warming. Uh, they're not really living up to those commitments fully. Uh, but they, but a lot of countries are trying. And on the good side, there is an energy revolution going on in the United States and elsewhere. It's We are making a transition towards less carbon intense energy, less energy produced by like coal, for instance, coal burning that produces carbon dioxide. We are in a transition to driving electric cars that eventually will be powered mostly with renewable energy and hopefully entirely one of these days. It's all not happening fast enough. So governments, now that they've taken the first steps, have to increase their level of ambition. Imagine what the world looks like if climate change just runs away and we don't have any chance to catch up. We'll be dealing with these events not every 100 years, not every 10 years, but several times a year, as has been calculated for coastal flooding, for instance. So there's just no choice. And I'm sure countries are realizing that slowly and we're at a, a pivot point. We have an energy revolution going on on the one hand. On the other hand, we have countries lagging, but starting to reduce their, to increase their commitment to and their actions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And being an optimist in life, I think the whole thing has a good chance of coming together and producing uh, a slowing and then a, of the climate change, then a stabilization of our climate and avoiding the kinds of outcomes that we just will never be able to deal with effectively. And that means saving lives and the long term, it means saving money. One report argued that for every dollar spent in advance, you save three or four dollars after the fact, after disasters have happened. So it pays to think about this now from the point of view of adaptation and certainly from the point of view of cutting our emissions as soon as possible. 